Look at the mothers who truly love their children. How many sacrifices they make for them. They are ready for everything, even to give their own blood, so that their babies grow up good, healthy and strong. The saints are everyday people who lived their lives with heroic virtue and faith. For the last 2,000 years, the Catholic Church has raised men and women of every age, race and culture to the altars. It was on the 16th of May 2004 that this day arrived for Dr. Gianna Beretta Molla, as Pope John Paul II named her a saint. How did this modern Italian wife and mother become a saint? St. Gianna's story began in Magenta, Italy on the 4th of October 1922, the tenth child of 13 children to Catholic parents Alberto and Maria Beretta. As she grew up, so did her devotion to her faith and her love of God. She earned degrees in medicine and surgery from the University of Pavia in 1949, eventually specialising in paediatrics in 1952. Her faith was central to her life, and she was active in lay movements such as Azione Cattolica and the Society of St Vincent de Paul. She saw her work with children and the elderly as a way of expressing her love of God and living her vocation for others. She was often quoted in life saying, whatever God wants. It was in 1950, after setting up her own practice near hometown of Magenta, that she met her future husband, Piero Molla, an engineer and faithful Catholic. There was a time before this where she considered a vocation as a missionary, but ill health prevented her travel. She constantly reflected on the Lord's will for her life and vocation, eventually leading to her marriage to Piero. She wrote, You are the man I had wished for, but I often ask myself, will I be worthy of him? Yes, worthy of you, because I want so much to make you happy, but I fear not being able to do so. When this happens, I ask God, Lord, you see my desire and my goodwill. Supply what is lacking. The couple found strength for their lives and marriage in the sacraments of the church. God's plan for her life to be a mother was realized in November 1956 when she became a mother to her first child, Pierre Luigi, their second child, Maria Zita, in December 1957, and their third child, Laura, in July 1959. She carried the task of motherhood with great duty, care and sensibility. Of this, she said, one earns paradise with one's daily task. In 1961, during her pregnancy, for the fourth time, she received some very worrying news. Towards the end of her second month of pregnancy, Gianna was struck with an unimaginable pain. It was discovered that she had developed a fibroma in her uterus, which meant that as well as a baby growing in her womb, it was also growing a tumour. Given the severity of the diagnosis, she was presented with three options by the doctors. The first was an abortion, which would save her life and allow her to continue to have children. However, this would kill the baby she was carrying. Another option was a hysterectomy, which would mean she could not be pregnant ever again, and this too would result in the death of her baby. A third option was the remover of the tumour only, which could lead to further complications for her life, but would save the life of her baby. As a devout Catholic mother and doctor, Gianna could never consider an abortion as an option. She chose to put her child first and insisted that doctors save the baby and remove the tumour. Her prayers were answered and the operation was successful at protecting the baby. She continued the final months of pregnancy with great strength and resolve. As the time was nearing for the birth of the child, Gianna continued to put the child's interest before her own. She said, if you must decide between me and the child, do not hesitate. Choose the child. I insist on it. Save him. 
On the morning of April 21st, 1962, Gianna Manuela was born. Over the course of the next week, amid excruciating pain and every effort to save Gianna's life, she died with the words, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. She was only 39 years old. This, however, was not the end of the story for Gianna. In life, she was already known for holiness, and this was shown by the huge number of mourners at her funeral. Her reputation grew, and people began visiting her grave and asking for her intercession. Cardinal Colombo of Milan began the process of the opening of her cause in 1972, which concluded in 1980. However, in order to become a saint, the Catholic Church requires that two miracles are approved and attributed to the saint. It is no surprise to the Mola family that these miracles came from Brazil, a country Gianna dreamed of visiting and where her brother Alberto served as a priest. The first miracle which led to her beatification was the case of a Brazilian Protestant woman who, following a stillbirth, developed serious complications that were life-threatening. One of the Catholic nuns treating the woman was concerned that she would not be able to survive the required journey to São Luís. She prayed to Jana, you who are Father Alberto's sister, make this fistula heal and keep this woman from having to travel to São Luís. The woman was instantaneously healed. The second miracle, which would lead to her canonization, took place in 1999, once again in Brazil. After a complication in pregnancy, when the child was deemed unable to survive, doctors recommended the abortion of the child. A friend of the woman spotted a local bishop who was visiting someone in hospital at the same time. He came to the hospital bed right away of the woman and prayed to God for the life of the baby. While he was anointing her, Bishop Silva returned and brought with him a biography of Blessed Gianna Beretta Mola and a blessed prayer card. The whole community begged the intercession of Gianna Mola and the doctors agreed to wait a little longer at the request of the woman and the community. The pregnancy continued to full term and despite doctors describing it as madness, the child was born healthy, contrary to all scientific expectation and the mother, despite suffering severe complications, made a full, healthy recovery. This miracle led to the canonization of St. Gianna Mola on the 16th of May 2004 in St. Peter's Square, Rome, by Pope John Paul II. In his homily, the Pope spoke about Gianna as a simple but more than ever significant messenger of divine love. In a letter to her future husband, a few days before their marriage, she wrote, Love is the most beautiful sentiment the Lord has put into the souls of men and women. St. Jana Mola, patron of mothers, physicians and unborn children, pray for us.